Welcome to Level 4, Math 7, Video 6 on Square Roots. Today we're going to be talking about how we find the root of a number that has already been multiplied, so already been squared. One of the signs that we really need to make sure that we understand is what's called the radical, this sign here. You'll see that all of these different problems have that radical around a number, or in this case, a couple numbers, so uh, a fraction. This radical sign is no different than an operation symbol like multiply, or divide, or subtract, or add. It tells us that there's an operation to be um, performed. And so with this, this radical sign tells us that there must be a number that when it's multiplied with itself is going to equal the number that's inside. And so as we've talked about already with squares and cubes, we know that there's things called perfect squares. And so we're going to start with the perfect squares today to talk about how we'd look at a square root. So if you look at number A, that's going to be our first number that we look at. So I'm going to put 36 inside my radical sign. And this tells me that I am looking for the number, the factor of 36 that when it's multiplied with itself or squared is going to give me 36. So if we were to list the factors, we know that we have 1, 36, 2, and 18. We know that we have 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and then we have 6 and 6. So those are our factors of 36. And as you can see, only one of them, our 6 and 6, actually are identical. Those factors are being squared to make this product. If I'm looking for the square root, what that's asking means, what is the one factor of the square that I'm looking at? So what is one of those two identical numbers or factors? And as you can see, these are not identical. Only the sixes are identical and still when multiplied make this product or uh, equal this product. So this is a perfect square. So the way I would write this problem is the square root of 36 equals 6. Okay? So that's one example. Now we're going to go through a couple other perfect squares and then look at what happens if we don't have a perfect square. The second one we're going to look at, B, the square root of 9. 9 is a perfect square. So if you think back to our list of perfect squares, what did we have to square? What number did we have to square to equal that product? If you think about it, you could even pause the video right now and take a look at that table that we created during that video and during that lecture on what our perfect squares were. What were those factors that when squared come up with a perfect product? So the whole number squares. If you pause the video, now you have a chance to take a look. If you didn't pause the video, I'm going to move forward with the fact that our perfect square would have to be 3 times 3. That is the only factor that can be multiplied with itself to equal this product. So the answer of what is the square root of 9 is 3. Well, what if they aren't perfect squares? So in C, we don't have a perfect square. If you look at your list, you'll see that that's not on our list of perfect squares. Even if you go all the way out to 13 or 14 squared, 15 squared, that's not on our list. There's numbers close to it, but they're not exactly equal to 150. This is still asking us the same question. What is the factor that when multiplied with itself is going to equal 150? Because it's not a perfect square, that's going to be a decimal. And that can get kind of tricky. So instead, we're going to round. We're going to estimate which one's closest. So again, if you look at your list, you're going to see that there's some just below it and just above it. So if you look at your list, you're going to see that 144 is a perfect square right below this number of 150. 
if you look at your list above, you're going to see 169 is the one right above 150. There's no perfect squares in between 144 and 150 or 169 and 150. They go in this order. Okay, so if I take the square root of these perfect squares, I'm going to get a whole number because they're perfect squares. What we need to determine for our rounding purposes or estimation purposes is which one of these numbers that is a perfect square is closest to 150. Okay? Take a moment and think about that. Hopefully, if you didn't pause the video, you've had a chance to think about it and you'll see that 144 is only four, excuse me, six numbers off of 150, whereas 169 is 19 numbers off of 150. This is clearly the closer of the two. And so when I round, I'm going to be using this perfect square as my estimation. It's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be completely accurate, but it gives me an estimated value of what number I'm probably going to be dealing with. It also tells me what the whole number is of that decimal that I would have to have used. So since this is a perfect square, I say what number do I need to multiply with itself to equal 144? And I see 12 times 12. So the square root of 144 is one of those, and so it's equal to 12. So this answer, what is the square root of 150, is not exactly 12, but about 12. This symbol right here represents about. It's an estimation. It tells us clearly that it is not an exact answer for the problem we're dealing with, but it's close. Okay, we're going to do one more rounded one for you, and then we're going to look at that fraction on E. So the next one we have, there's that radical sign again, always seen this radical sign telling us this operation of find that one root. So 112, if you look on your list again, you'll notice that it's not on that perfect list of squares. So what's closest? Again, let's look at what's above it and what's below it. Directly below, we have the square root of the perfect square, 100. Nothing in between 100 and 112 on our square list. Right above it, the square root of 120. 1. Again, nothing between 112 and 121. So now we have to ask that same question. Which of those perfect squares is closest to what we're looking at? That's going to determine which one we round to. So between 100 and 112, we have a difference of 12. Between 112 and 121, we have a difference of 9. So therefore, this is our closest perfect square. If we look at our list, we see that the factors of that square that are identical are 11 times 11, clearly telling us that the one factor that would need to be squared is 11. And so our answer, again, using those about signs, is about 11. Not exact, but about.